So welcome to the Unfuck by Design podcast series. I'm Jackson, one of your hosts, and this is a live workshop series for designers, entrepreneurs, and creative visionaries looking to design better things across borders and time zones. In these workshops, we'll play with design techniques, gain insights from industry experts, and tackle real world design challenges. So let's dive into it. Unfuck by Design. So guys, I'm going to just quickly run through what it is we're going to be covering today and then go into a round of introductions. So everyone knows um, who is going to be uh, in the conversation today. And to start with just a bit of, bit of background on this structure, this format. So you know, each month we are um, running two podcasts, so long form conversations around topics relating to uh, design and design best practice and two workshops, live interactive workshops. Our mission is to empower creative visionaries to become better agents for an acceptable future for humanity by exploring cutting edge design techniques, fostering collaboration across time zones and sharing insights from industry experts. We're committed to developing innovative solutions that positively impact people and planet while sharing the process. Together, we'll tackle tough questions and strive for actionable outcomes. So. Um, I think it's important to, to really carefully state our mission because everything that we do in this series, we're trying to bring it back to um, the, these goals. So uh, the goal of today is to understand how we might better use AI, diffusion models or uh, large language models to deliver on our mission. The design challenge for today. So um, this uh, workshop came off the back of a podcast last week with um, with the uh, one of the founders from uh, Leonardo AI, and the outcome of that was that JJ said he'd be interested to to consider um, onboarding as a design challenge. So today we're going to explore that you know UX research for customer onboarding process for a customer onboarding process, and just some of the rules for this get involved like this is interactive uh we've you know um we're, we're hosting this in miro i believe um dave have you shared the links with the others um you know if you haven't used miro before it's pretty simple it's just you know copy and paste move things around it's an online whiteboarding tool and you know but if you have any issues with it just let us know you know we'll, we'll help you out you know roll with it we don't know where this is going to go it's and that's by design you know, we've, uh, we, we love the fact that, uh, you know, Dave and I, we, we've carved out these, these few hours every week to just bring smart people to the table, have some fun and learn from the process. You know, we've got stuff to share, you know, we've got plenty of things to share, but we, we are here to learn as well. And so this is just creating a space where we can do it. So that being said, just a few introductions. I'm Jackson, I'm a designer, strategist, and the facilitator and host for this uh, this podcast and workshop series, Dave. Sorry, yeah, it's a bit weird what's happening today. So yeah, marketing specialist, Web3 education and user research. And um, yeah, looking forward to collaborating on this project. Jake. Yeah, so I'm uh, one of the five co-founders of Leonardo and COO. Um, yeah, super happy to be here. Thanks for having me. And cool. I'm Adrian Anderson, a user experience designer and a small time entrepreneur. Small and time? And, and here for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> awesome to have you guys here. Adrian, uh, I know you have to leave uh, only after half an hour today, and that's, that's totally fine. Really, really happy you could come. You only found out about it yesterday. So, you know, um, really looking forward to having you on the next one, maybe. Yeah. You come along. It'd be great. That's fun. Um, really appreciate your your experience on these topics. So, uh, moving right along to the next. So, <clears throat> I thought this is an important to note uh, note to make. Uh, Dave and I, when we were preparing for this session, and we were, we were playing around with some prompts in GPT four, and uh, you know, some of the processes. So, here's my note to myself for today's session. Some of the processes we discussed in the session are for demo purposes only. These tools are great to get things started, but I'm super wary of how convincing they are when we know that they lie. Hallucinations. Mm. As professionals, we still need to know our craft to smell the bullshit. And that's so true, right? Like 
it's it, it, you you need to be able to read between the lines you need to understand what you're doing it's great that especially gpt great tool for um having you know a a co-collaborator that's always there always listening to bounce ideas off and get the ball rolling um but if you know i suppose the the, the crux of what i'm saying here is if i was a non-designer trying to get the same results um I would be having to depend on the the model being right, right? <laughs> which is which is dangerous. It's really, 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 really dangerous. So, um, whatever you use the tools for, you should still be a professional in that field. You know, don't self um, uh, diagnose. Don't treat it like a doctor or a surgeon, please. <laughs> like, so yeah, so I created this board, right? Like, um, you know, we've got. The, the using these tools, these modern tools, because this this series, this podcast and, and workshop series that we're doing, this is not about um, AI and machine learning. It, it's not about that. This is just one part of it, you know. So we're we're talking about this at the moment because you know it's 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 incredibly relevant, and Dave and I both want to understand where we fit into it. You know, like how do we fit into this, and and how do we stay on the front of this wave? Like how do we how do we keep up <laughs> without, without panicking? Right. Like, um, and I think I said it on the last podcast, it's sort of been like a pendulum over the last few years of panic and acceptance, you know, as automation comes and it's like, now it's, it's really, really here and it's accelerating, um, super fast. This, I, I, I have a feeling that a lot of these conversations will integrate AI and, and, um, you know, language models into them. Like they'll, they'll be along for the ride, but, it's this def this series definitely isn't just about AI and machine learning. So um, on this board, I thought I'd bring in and at any time you can you can add things in here, but risks and rewards in relation to our goal, you know, like for me, one of these risks is, you know, hallucinations, right? Um, the rewards is, you know, um, having a co designer who is always listening. Um, you know, that's a reward for me, you know, getting stuff, getting high quality work done faster. Yeah. But, you know, Another done faster with more consistency. Other risks can be distractions, like, yeah, Sorry? you can get lost in this world of, um, you know, AI tools. And just so I'm just leaving those there as different examples, different. right? Like. You can come back to it any time. Yeah. Like if we're, we're talking about something, you know, the, the goal of a workshop is we're, we're trying to achieve a goal together, right? Like we're, we're, and those goals are to learn a little bit more about how we might use uh, these tools to, to improve our design process. And so, yeah, contributing along the way, um, uh, your insights and feedback is, is really important to reaching that goal. Day-to-day -day use of using AI tools. Uh, Sorry, Dave, you might need to speak up just a little bit. Just when I, you. I got that. Yeah, I got it. Uh, so the um, uh, uh, like a risk, uh, like career risks, or uh, are we talking, um, you know, risks like I'm not sure if I should be author, trying to author this in uh, in AI. Like, there's certainly a few um, existential risks to. Uh, uh, to to what we understand about our jobs. Um, you know, over the next few years, but um, you know, the way that I see that is that you just—it's very hard to actually see the future until the future arrives, and uh, mm -hmm. and dystopian futures generally don't pan out. Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm just enjoying the uh, I'm enjoying the journey. I mean, for me personally, I think one of the things I noticed straight away is. Um, quite easy to become dependent on tools like this uh and it's like yeah very easy to start relying on it a bit too heavily sometimes because when you've got something that just uh can bring your ideas to life like so well and often do it better than you uh yeah it's very very easy to go down that rabbit hole and um yeah yeah that's that, and that kind of makes it um it, it makes it more relevant that, that you need to know your craft 
in what what you're trying to achieve with the tool um mm. and i guess that's what we're trying to explore here yeah exactly. it's, a, it's a good way to frame that because I've, I've actually been thinking about that myself right like um what happens when the dependent skills because there's a set of skills that you require to be able to ask a good question mm. and if they are it, like say for my, my kids, right? Like if they just know, you know, they expect a certain result, but they haven't gone through the process of learning a craft, mm. then what happens to the quality at that point? Exactly. Of the it's output. Yeah. If you can't ask it properly, it's, a, it's a much lower quality output that you get. Um, every That's time. great. That's awesome. Well, look, um, yeah, guys, I, what I was going to do is just scan through these boards first and then just come back so we can just get a general feel for what we're going to cover. Um, I think that this this board is really important. And um, Jake, have you have you used Miro before? Uh, yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah cool. Yeah. Um, so you just like copy and paste those stickies, add as many as you like. Um, yes. And so, yeah, the, the next segment on this was really looking at um the journeys um journey to customer segments and you know go through the process of how we might ideate on um user types and uh, customer journeys for an onboarding process just like how i'd, I'd sort of initiate that conversation with a, a stakeholder or a customer just go through that process right like and and this is really a, a lo-fi approach. It's like the first conversation. Whenever I pick up the phone or I'm on a call or I'm in person, I'd start by mapping out who we're talking about and what is the pathway that they're going through to achieve their goal. Um, and then from there, <clears throat> I'm hoping to then demonst demonstrate how we would um, do achieve um, similar goals or better outcomes with uh, with um, GPT-4 um, and on from there, where we might go to next, because I think at that point we're, you know, we're going to have limited time, but we brought in a few examples here, you know, just things that that we've come across, um, you know, resources and, uh, you know, ideas for how we might move on to the, you know, high fidelity stage or, you know, um, low fidelity, then high fidelity stage, the prototyping area, right? Like, because... I mean, that's, that's one of the big concerns for designers initially is like, oh my God, what the, the machine's going to take over and we're not going to need to push pixels anymore, right? And so this is one area where we might drill down to in future workshops um, as we have time. And so that's really it, right? That, that, and there's quite a bit to cover in there. And, you know, we'll, we'll meander and have some conversations along the way like we just did on the, um, the risks and re um, rewards um, uh, panel. But yeah, so continuing on from there, let's just, just pause here for a second and talk about, <clears throat> talk about where we're currently at with Leonardo AI, the onboarding process, right? Like, have you got any challenges that you're trying to overcome? specifically with with onboarding yeah yeah so i mean <clears throat> we've been hard at work building a great product over the last few months uh and in that time it's been maturing but uh in terms of using the tools for a first time user that's never been exposed to this sort of thing it can be quite uh complicated at first glance um i mean you jump onto like the home page and we've got like an amazing community feed and you see all these uh, insane artworks generated by AI, but then to know how to actually create those, uh, it can be a bit of a jump um, from just like, you know, jumping into the tool and entering a prompt to actually realizing uh, you can check out, you know, what prompts people are using, what settings they're using. And so, yeah, I think uh, creating an onboarding sequence, which can take users through that process and really get them up to speed with what each of these settings and tools are capable of doing. That's really good. Yeah. Another thing is, um, I don't know about you when you first use GPT, but it can be a little bit overwhelming when you just have like something so powerful and an empty box and you can ask anything. And then you're like, what do I ask at this point? Right. <laughs> yeah. So where, where do I start? Like, um, 
you know, where's yeah. a great place to start? Um, yeah, or, or like, what what is this actually capable of doing? How are people using this? Like, um, what can I create with this? You know, because at the moment, it's essentially you can create anything you like, but uh, uh, being faced with that is can be a little bit confronting sometimes. So uh, tell me a little bit about, um, <clears throat> so predominantly at this point in time, it is, uh, well, it's been built for game asset creation. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, that's, that's what we had yep. in mind at first. Yeah. And that's over right. time it's, it's evolved. So now we've got a huge range of verticals, uh, and people and user types in those verticals that are using the platform. Um, so anywhere from AI art enthusiasts to, uh, marketing product design, um, photographers using it for like stock imagery. Uh, a lot of people using it to create like art for books and things like that, advertising, architecture, interior design, fashion, yeah. uh, a bunch. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So then, um, the, for, for me, like one of the key features that stood out and, um, Adrian, this is the, you know, um, you haven't had a chance to play with, with Leonardo AI. Um, but the, the, the feature that stood out most to me was being able to train the model like your, your secret source around training your own, uh, uh, uh diffusion model. So it, it's, it's using the, the larger model, but also you can bring in a bunch of images to narrow down the focus. Mm. And that to me, just like I, I instantly got that as being a benefit, right? Um, mm. where, where do you feel that fits within the onboarding journey? Do you feel that that's like a, um, something that the, it, like a penny dropping moment for other users as well, or is it? I think so. And I think to date, uh, a, a lot of people that are coming on the platform just want to, you know, generate images with whatever's available, like models already on the platform, mm -hmm. but we would love to encourage, um, users to be creating their own models just to realize how powerful it actually is. Cause gotcha. um, yeah, if you have a specific use case, uh, mm -hmm. training of like fine tuning a model is extremely powerful. Uh, Do you feel that the, um, that that is an, an obvious, um, strength of the system for users at this, and that, that there's no right or wrong answer to this. I'm not implying that it's not, I, I found it quite easy. I'm just trying to drill down into what, you know, might be, um, a, a, you know, a strength of the platform that, that may be underserved or, or um, not uh, visible enough, potentially. Yeah, yeah. No, that's definitely like one of the biggest strengths and what we've invested probably the most time into, I think. Gotcha. Um, so 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, so it's already got quite, a, you know, a fair amount of weight with it. You know, people are these users when they they're, they're handed the microphone and you're asking them to say something. They're <laughs> they're seeing that they can train the model straight away. So not necessarily though. So while it's like we believe it's like you know one of the most killer features, we think it's probably being underutilized right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Likely. Yeah. Due to lack of proper onboarding or education around it, which um, would be great to tackle. Yeah. So underutilized, um, uh, training, um, feature, uh, is, oh God, my spelling today is terrible. Feature is, um, you know, training the model. Yep. Cool. Great. Well, look, you know, <laughs> from here, it's, you know, we've got some, some challenges, right? Some, some things that we might choose to overcome. And this is just a, a demonstration purposes, right? How we might prioritize problems to solve customers to solve them for, and then, you know, dig into a little bit of a journey, right? You know, it's, it's a fun exercise. If we were in the same room together, um, you know, on the same team, we'd have more time, right? Uh, mm -hmm. but for the sake of this exercise, you know, I think it might be interesting to move on to the, the next, which would be, um, you know, customer segments. I put a couple in here, you know, indie gamers uh, and artists, um, you know, Dave's brought in a few, so fashion designers, interior designers, 
what that would was you a say? Example of a writer and an author using, um, you know, we're using this tool as well as ChatGPT to to um, publish a children's book. That was a sensational use case. So, and, and it like brings into focus perhaps two different um, customer segments. One was the writer and the author, but it could be the solopreneur that you know that looks for opportunities to publish things on like Amazon and they sell ebooks and they build these sort of marketing funnel systems with these products like this so if they could fast track this process that's an interesting use case as well um, yeah 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 cool um, so they're like uh, well you, you called it a solo preneur solo, you know entrepreneur so, solopreneur, yeah. Or, yeah, or, yeah yeah look and I think that's that's you know, a, a great um, customer segment. I mean, for me, as a designer, um, I'm, I'm more, you know, finding images in my role is probably less important, but I, I do see that a lot of UI um, focused designers would be um, looking for uh, you know, images that imply that they're indicative of the message they're trying to send. You know, so I'd, I'd definitely say that, um, that, yeah, so you, you are UX designers, you got it up there. That's great. And yeah, look, I think that's a, that's a good spread, right? What about traditional illustrators? I feel like there's yeah. something here. Yeah, certainly. Well, that's, it's, that's, because I think there's a, um, they're really interesting because I feel like they're probably, um, from what I'm hearing and seeing online, probably the most, um, vocal about the use of these models, uh, for commercial purposes, right? You know, that you're going to replace us or you're, you're training this model based on, yeah. on our art, on my art, like, you know, so I think in terms of the overarching vision of this podcast as well, or this, this series, that's a good one to zoom into as well, right? Like at some point, um, you know, how could illustrators utilize a platform like this to do better, yeah. you know, to, to take their art further. So yeah, I agree. It's a great one. But look, I think, um, for now, you know, where we would go normally with a workshop like this, um, Jake is, you know, probably go through a, some sort of prioritization or heat mapping exercise. We would vote with the stakeholders, sure. you know, so, um, but we, you know, because you are the, the, the stakeholder on this, you, you, you have the business interests in the front of your mind there. I don't think that exercise is, is valuable, right? It's not really valuable for us to vote on something. We don't know the business objectives, right? But broadly speaking. So, I mean, let's just, let's pick one, you know, let's um, maybe pick one customer segment that you think is the most important just for the sake of this exercise and maybe um, uh, top two challenges for that customer segment. Yeah. Let's um, here, I'll give you a little, Let's see these little dots here. Oh, yeah. You can use this as a voting dot. Yeah, so sorry. maybe, yeah. So you can just copy it, you know, drag it or copy and paste it. Um, so one, just one customer segment and maybe two um, challenges. You got game studios. Cool. Um, That's great. So yeah, if we're talking about game studios, that aligns quite well with what we're talking about in yep. terms of training. Oh, sorry, Adrian, we're, we're just doing, um, we're letting um, uh, Jake do the voting on this just because we, we don't know the, um, we don't have intimate understanding of the business goals and roadmap. Um, so yeah, sorry, that's because you've been in my workshops before, so it's totally understandable you jump into the voting. That's with my great. agency. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we've got game studios and we've got, there's so many ways I could use this. Where do I start? And under, underutilized feature is training the model. And so I'd probably, I'd probably dig a little bit deeper into what we mean by game studios. Cause there's probably sub, um, you know, yeah. there's, 
there's there's uh, multiple segments within that. Like, um, is it a um, an indie game studio, or is it a large? You know, um, I'm not a gamer, so I can't pick off the top of my head. Um, you know, is it is it an, Nintendo? As my parents would have said. Well, is it something <laughs> I, something I like the yeah they the ability to be able to spit out multiple um, you know platforms multiple games and not all of them would be successful right so like being able to do this really fast is helpful well i'm, I'm just trying to drill down into the type of game studio okay, so i'd yeah. say game studios with uh like multiple multiple titles under their name uh, okay with a lot of like existing assets because that's sure. what uh really enables like uh model fine tuning um whereas like if you're an indie game developer you're like ready to make a new game a lot of it's from scratch. So initially, right off the bat, you know, model training may not be the way to go um, if you don't have existing assets or uh, unless you're ready to create them. So, um, yeah, but I guess within game studios and you've obviously got, you know, the other user types under that, the actual artists, the art directors. Um, so if you want to go more niche, we can do that. But um, yeah, so it, would, would it be, um, you know, uh, what? I would it be sort of a um like a, a, a medium sized um you know game studio at this point in time if we were to focus because right like you know we want to go for everyone right like there's yeah, no yeah. no doubt like and and we're not going to separate ourselves from that completely it's just for the for the sake of narrowing in on a set of needs yeah sure let's go uh, double a uh studio so medium sized um double a medium sized game studios, multiple titles, many existing assets. So, so it looks like we've got a, you know, we've got a customer segment. Um, we don't necessarily have a, like a persona there yet, but now we have these two guys at the top, right down. Let's jump in. There's so many ways to use this. Where could I start? underutilized features training model. Okay. So looking at it through this lens, who would you say would be, um, the most likely individual within this organization to, uh, to take this to, to take your solution to the CTO for sign off oh, no, so, or to the CFO for sign off. Uh, so likely the art director, art director. Cool. Art director. Cool. So we're talking to the art director for this company at this point in time. Cool. So what I'm going to do, because we're running out of space for the journey, I'll open this one. So are you following um, everything where, where we're going with this at the moment? You understand the process. I'm sure you would have been through similar before, you know, so you understand what we're doing. Um, any, any questions before I move on to the next step? Uh, no, no, this is great. Let's yeah. Go. yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is cause the next exercise is I'm going to jump into, um, GPT four, which has just told me that it's only going to give me 25 prompts, even though I'm paying for pro, I don't, I don't understand it. Um, yeah. it hasn't been doing that up until now. So we'll see how far we get with the prompting, <laughs> but yeah, after that, we're going to go, we're going to take the knowledge we gained in this. We're going to layer it some GPT magic over the top and see, um, where it takes us. Right. So for me with this journey, I'll probably bring these guys down to the bottom, start tidying this fella up. Okay. So from here, so we've got an art director, right? Um, I'd be inclined to have a think about the environment in which they make their decisions, you know, so what, where, you know, where they would come from to, um, to arrive at Leonardo.ai and then what they would go through to reach their goal, which is, um, ultimately understanding the product and then your goal would be to, um, essentially have a conversion, right? So let's, let's put those down here. Goals, goal one, 
um, you know, successful, um, successful uh, <laughs> integration into process into process, um, studio process. That would be like goal one. And then for you, for your business, it's a conversion um, to paid customer. Yeah? Yeah. So, <clears throat> Let's have a quick chat about that. So where, how does this art director hear about Leonardo AI? How do they currently hear about you? Uh, right now, it's uh, a lot of word of mouth, uh, organic traffic um, coming from like places like YouTube and from our Twitter page. Um, and then the third one is we've already spoken to a lot of existing game studios and like VCs uh, in the game industry. And upon coming across Leonardo, they're sharing it with a lot of their portfolio companies and um, yeah, game studios that could level something like this because there are there is a lot to gain um, with, with the efficiency gains from Leonardo. Awesome. That's great. So they're, they're hearing about it from there. Um, they're coming straight to, are they going to discord first? Cause you've got quite a big discord community. Yeah. 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 So, uh, not all the time. Um, the discord is, uh, a useful for people to chat about. There are quite a few game studios in there that talk about, uh, like similar problems they have and, uh, trying to reach common objectives. Um, but generally they would come onto platform first, um, and, you know, sign up to get whitelisted. Um, and to speed so, up the process, you can go to Discord. So when you're talking about platform, you're talking about the like the homepage, right? Like they're coming there first or? Uh, so they would come to our landing page first, which isn't our platform. Um, so that's like Leonardo.ai. Yeah. And Understood. over there, uh, all you can do is you get a bit of information about what you can do and you can sign up to get access. Let's have a quick look at this guy. There we go. And so we know we're talking about platform, what we're, what we're talking about when we're, we're talking about platform. So they've heard about it word of mouth. They, they come here, um, you know, just scanning through, understanding the value proposition to them as an art director. Then at this point in time, um, they might try and launch the app, realize that they can't, and then go for early access. Yeah, yeah, uh, basically, yeah. Yep. And part of getting uh, faster access is going through our Discord and there's a form you can fill out and you can enter the like priority queue. Try to launch the app. Um, register for early access. And then Discord for priority queue. Cool. And so then at that point, um, the over there I'll put him on this one cool um so the early access uh, currently it's a um you know a, a, a google form and yeah which look i think it's it's important to to mention um you guys have an incredible uh community on discord right i think you've got like over five hundred thousand members yeah, it's uh, it's growing like crazy. Uh, I think we're almost at seven hundred now. That's 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 amazing, right? So, like, yeah. I think just for everyone out there who like might be going, because people have different perspectives on um, what they should be doing with their uh, <clears throat> their marketing presence in the early days. You know, it's like you know because we're talking about you've got a Google form to take early access registrations, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's great that you've just used the simplest method of getting the job done short term, mm -hmm. right? And now you're at that point, your community is blown up. It's like, what's the next thing we can do, right? Like that's a bit of, bit of context from the business side, right? You, mm. um, is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, cool, awesome. So, um, so they're going to Discord for early access and register for early access, Google Form. 
Google form, Discord. And then from there, um, you know, the, the details are sent via yeah. Um, email. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, approved. Yep. And in that email is the link to the actual platform at that stage, which is app.leonardo.ai. Yeah. So link uh, to uh, that. Are there any instructions that go out with that email? Uh, yeah, very brief ones, basically just saying, um, you know, head to app.leonardo. Um, you still need to sign up and then you can log in. Um, that's the extent of that. Yeah, cool. Cool. Um, so once they're in, um, so they're on their, their dashboard, right? Yeah. Yeah. You show up on the, on the home page, which, uh, contains like, um, a, a list of featured models up the top and then uh, our community feed. Yeah. And anything else that you can see in there, Dave, you can, you can add them in too, if you, if you need, or if you hear anything in the conversation. Um, so they're on the dashboard and then that's it. We, we've got our context, right? We sort of understand where we're at in terms of onboarding now. Yeah. Um, so this is just a, a very quick, um, generalized view at how we might understand the problem from a design perspective. Um, UX research, right? Just we want to we want to focus in on understanding priority users, customer segments, the users. Um, figure out as quickly as possible um, which of the prior, which ones are most important to solve for. You know, which you know, in, in a lot of cases, will force that decision through um, even one stakeholder. You know, so we'll have a group of stakeholders voting. In a session, you know, in person or remote, and then we'll have final, like one final decision, which is quite often the CEO or or CTO will come in and just go, "No, nah, we're we're doing this first, right?" Bang, right. you know, yeah. and then that forces us to to just get moving, start with something, right? Because you know, there's a whole lot of paralysis by analysis that happens in this industry where it's like, "Oh, which one do we start with?" You know, what if we make a mistake? It's like, well, look, make a mistake very quickly so you can change, right? It doesn't work for every industry. You don't want to do that with medical equipment, right? <laughs> you know, or, or buildings or bridges, but, um, and, and a lot of, and in a lot of cases with, with data as well, right? So you do need to be careful with mm -hmm. that approach. Um, you know, it's not a one size fits all, but in this case for onboarding and, and solving, you know, fairly simple problems, um, we want to make some decisions quickly, right? You know, so that is a caveat for anyone who might be um, listening to this, that yeah, move fast and break things is not always the priority approach to take. I mean, you just look at the state of Silicon Valley now and the big mistakes that people have made, you know, so, um, so yeah, but just discussing or you know, just explaining how we might move through this process to understand what the current onboarding um, approach is. And then we might then move on to ideating what the new approach would be right. So let's do that underneath. It's funny, Dave, we put 15 minutes on this one. That was, that was, I don't know what I was thinking there, but the here we go. Ooh, <laughs> on to the next one. Um, so let's make this our current. Adrian, no problems, my friend. Thanks for coming in to be a fly on the wall, and I'm looking forward to hearing your um, yeah your feedback. So I know that you're gonna um, be super interested. Yeah, I look look forward to having a look at the board when you're finished. I, um, yeah, sorry I didn't communicate uh, well enough the the times to you, mate. That was, uh, that hey, was that's, my issue. That's, that's fine. Um, hey. Jake, amazing product. Uh, I can't, oh, believe the, you, can't believe the fidelity and the, the geometric sensibility. It's, it's actually blowing my mind. Um, yeah, some of the, I really some of the stuff that. that's getting produced in there as a, as someone who's used, you know, Dali and things like that. It's just amazing what you're doing here. Anyway, Thanks, um, good luck guys. Catch you soon. Thanks Adrian. Cheers. Adrian. Speak Adrian. to you soon. See ya. Okay. So, um, we are going to. 
And Dave, dude, this is a question I had from last time because we're streaming through um, uh, Riverside to yeah. Twitch. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not keeping an eye on Twitch. Have you got Twitch open in yeah, case people are asking any questions? Yeah, I mean, I you know, maybe one of our three three followers might join. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and I suppose that's a question for future streams. It's like, should I have it open in the background? You know. Um, no, you you just keep so the, then the workshop and I'm fielding the um the logistics behind the scenes all good got it covered cool buddy cool 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 so then now we've got a picture and you know we we understand what we're currently dealing with we might be in a position to uh, hypothesize on a a possible new um, onboarding journey right like make some assumptions on what what this user wants to see and and how it should flow there's nothing wrong with making those assumptions and just getting started right so again we're talking about an art director and they're coming to the the site now so we're talking about ideal you know um best case scenario what what do we want to see in this process i'd, I'd say it's like um it's probably still the same so they're hearing about Leonardo. Um, they're coming to the home page. Let me get rid of that one. You know, um, okay, so from, from here, where um, Jake, we're talking about them being able to create an account right away. Uh, yeah. Yeah, look, look, as we, uh, so the reason we currently have like the whitelist in place was just uh, since there's like such an influx of users, it's a way to um, slow that down a little bit so that we can make sure our infrastructure can hold up. Um, sure. But as we mature, definitely would want to open that up so you can just create an account and use it straight away. Would we, so you, the, the whitelisting short term, so say if we, um, what we're designing now is an onboarding journey that um, we can implement in the next two months mm. or three months. Maybe yeah. that, that maybe that'd be helpful to, to put some parameters around it. So we're probably saying we're, we're going to keep the, um, the whitelisting in some form. Would that be the case? Uh, in two to three months. I mean, there is a likelihood that we won't have the whitelist anymore, actually. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So then we're skipping that step and just going to, so, um, launch the app launch app um, you know view login slash register screen yep. then from there um, you know click register you know fill now is it going to be a single sign-on or um, an actual registration form uh you can use either uh, either yeah so it's going to be sso um or uh slash um you know email slash path uh, or email and pass or email and pass yeah yeah uh, let's click register <laughs> from there um email confirmation I'd say that you're, you know, you're going to be wanting to, to still do that. Confirm their email. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Email confirmation. And then, um, first time. So click confirm, uh, click confirm. Then they have to, um, log in, right? Yeah. Log in. Then from there, now they're on the dash, right? Now they're on the dash. Actually, one thing I forgot to mention uh, previously when we were talking about the dash is we do have like a, a modal where they create a username and pick their interests. Um, so I just added it now, but yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, good stuff. So they're on their dashboard and this is where we are. Look, there's multiple moments in here where um, you could be 
helping them with this problem, right? So we come back to the problem, which is there's so many ways I could use this. Where should I start? Mm. Um, so underutilized a feature is the um, training model. So I almost see that this one could be over here somewhere. Yeah. Um, this one could also be over here yeah. and over here. You know what I mean? So there's, yeah. so there's so many ways that we could um, use this. Where should I start? Um, now we're talking about um, medium sized game studios, multiple titles and many um, existing assets and art directors within those companies. So, you know, the, the first place I'd, I'd probably be looking is, you know, content creation, you know, in this space, mm -hmm. um, you know, and probably trying to talk to um, some of those art directors about some, you know, test content early, mm. you know, um, but then also guiding them through that process is also probably when people register and oh, don't use the app, right? So they, they register, mm -hmm. but they, um, they don't actually sign in. They don't, or they don't ever create an asset. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Right. Um, so there's, there's sort of three places where I could see that, that problem being a problem, you know, something we can solve for this, this art director specifically, then I'd go through a process of, okay, look, um, let's, uh, prototype the solution. What's the quickest way we can get to, um, something for a conversation with the right people and then set up those conversations, you know, so I'd be, um, probably straight away trying to find a list of art directors for those companies to invite to, you know, I'd probably aim for 10, mm -hmm. um, with the hope that seven or five showed up, you know, or were interested and, um, you know, figure out how to incentivize the process and start conversations with them, develop a relationship around, um, building a solution for them, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so hopefully this is, you know, this, this was and where I said, we were going to flow with this. We really have, because we, we gave ourselves 15 minutes for this day. We, we've, um, we've gone way over and that's okay. Right. Because this is, um, you know, this is how we'd kick off a, a project and kick off how we'd solve these problems. Right. And one of the things with using AI to solve these same problems is um, and I haven't, and I'm trying to reconcile this in my mind, right? Like, and that's part of this process is doing it on your own is just, it's not, it's not the solution. Doing it on your own with AI is not the solution. Um, getting inspiration from AI and bringing it to the table in some way is definitely a solution. Mm how to do it the best way i don't know yet right i'm trying to figure that out and so after this we'll, we'll jump into some prompts and 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 have a look at the rabbit hole that dave and i went down the other night <laughs> yeah i'm really keen for this i, I really enjoy using gpt hey so. <laughs> it's it's great isn't it it's um yeah you I, I, sometimes i just want to like yeah, sorry oh no it's i'm saying we kind of um shrunk that process that may have taken us multiple workshops and multiple, um, you know, attempts into like 15 minutes. It was really, really fascinating to see unfold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, it's a never ending process, right? Like, I mean, you, you'd have a backlog of, of problems to solve for the business, you know, um, there's some sort of problem prioritization mechanism, um, that we, we haven't discussed. And, and that is, um, again, something that, AI might be able to help identify some problems, um, but you really need to, you need data to be able to make sure they are problems. You need to speak to people. You also, there's like, it's interesting is when you start to say, okay, well, all you need is to give AI more data, which is terrifying for anyone, um, you know, to just that be a never ending process. There's still something that happens with, this human interaction, which is always surprising, mm. you know, like, um, you get similar surprises from the large language models, but there's also equally, um, uh, surprising outcomes that happen just through conversation with people, 
you know, like where you thought this was the problem, it's not actually the problem, mm. you know, and, uh, and I don't know if an AI is going to be able to go, okay, well, like you told me to solve this problem. So I'm going to say, you know, that, that whole, um, that thought experiment about the paper, paper clips, <laughs> did you hear about that one? But you just, so you, you feed the, um, the AI, the, the prompt to, um, make more paper clips or better paper clips. And the outcome is that, um, it destroys all humans because, um, it needs more energy to create paper clips or something like that. I don't know. Don't quote me on that, but it's like, that's, that's you know, what was the actual problem we're trying to solve here? It's really the challenge is to try to, to stay on point with the problem yeah. as you move through these conversations. So no, look, let's, work. let's, we'll get into it. Okay. So I've, I've got my GPT four open here and I have a document open in the other screen, which I'll show you. So these are the, these were the prompts that we used the other night. I'm just going to go back through them. They, you know, this is the thing. There's so many ways you could go, right? <laughs> like if we just, you know, felt that having a, um, a, a backbone to the conversation might be helpful for today, but um, um, we can only see the mirror I have no idea the how this is going to roll. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Stop. Thanks, Dave. Screen. Entire screen. Here we go. Cool. We good? We good. Yep. Cool. Well, that, that wouldn't have been helpful when I was trying to share um, Leonardo AI homepage earlier. Oh, yeah, I didn't, <laughs> right. didn't realize. I, I, only, I, only did it for, I only did it for like 30 seconds, 40 seconds. So it's oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Right, okay. But, um, look, I think that's a pretty common problem for every human on the planet at the moment. I'm like, can you see? Am I sharing my screen? Is that, can you, can you mute it, so. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so, so here's the prompts, right? This is the backbone for the prompting that we're going to do. Um, and we'll see if it stays relevant. Um, I have a... Um, an instance of GPT-4 running in chat GPT. Um, I'm also playing with a few other options at the moment, but GPT is the most stable and responsive. Um, so I'm going to start by asking it to be a, a team member. Oh, something went wrong. Look, I'm going to have to fix this up because I need to hide my left panel with CSS. Um, so I'm going to refresh this page. Bear with me. Only take two seconds. Okay. By the way, there is a way to get uh, more access to GPT four. Um, oh yeah. So I can share that with you guys. Yeah, do tell. Happy yeah, also. yeah. You can uh, you can sign up through OpenAI directly and just get an API key, and then ah. you can use like a another user interface. Yeah. Well, I should be. I, I mean, I've got um, the API key, but that's the. Um, GPT that's the the playground for the api and so yeah. it's um there's prob probably not what other people would use that's what i was trying to think of with with this exercise just trying to use something that would be familiar to people rather than doing the api yeah. login there's, um, a, there's an online like user interface that looks like gpt okay um, yeah, cool. yeah gotcha i was trying not to um to let everyone see under my um History. Under my chat skirt history. as well, a little bit. <laughs> that's, uh, that's it. So, so I've hidden all my chat history there, and in the in the API area, I've probably got more more stuff. So, um, but for this this session, we'll use the actual um, interface that everyone has simple access to. And let's get started with this. So I'm going to ask it to be a team member. So I'd like you to act as UX designer on the Leonardo AI team. Uh, here we go. So it's going to just riff on what it would do as a, um, a, a UX designer on the team. We probably don't need to meander there for too long. It's, it's nice stuff, but um, we're going to move straight on to the next prompt. Um, <clears throat> I'm also a designer on the team, and I'll be working with you. I didn't do this last time, but I think it's going to be important. Stop generating. Cool. Great. Um, cause yeah, like, um, the, these models, they, for the people who haven't used them before, um, it is really important to give that feedback 
it, it, it does get smarter. You only get out what you put in. And so the quality of the input that you bring back is, is really important. Um, so I'm, I'm constantly in a dialogue where if I make an iteration and, and it's often a complete or really dramatic iteration on, on what it gives me, I, I usually feed it back in the outcome, like my outcome back in. Um, so um, a first project we, will be to build a better onboarding process. Okay. So this is all building context, right? It's not, you know, it's, it's sort of just grabbing stuff, you mm. know, from the model and, and spitting things out on the page, nothing incredibly interesting here. Um, I mean, if you were, um, you know, in your own time, anyone following along, it's, it's just explaining to us, uh, you know, with this next prompt, our first project would be a better onboarding process, what the process it might go through to actually um, to build this process, right? And look, these are things we went through, understanding the, um, the, the user needs and goals, defining key onboarding objectives, mapping out user flows, um, designing onboarding um, screens. And so, yeah, we've done everything up to three, right? Mm. Not doing the rest in this exercise. So let's move on to the next one. So um, here's some info about Leonardo AI. So what I did was I just, I, I just grabbed some, some copy from the website Give it some more context. Mm. Just chucked it in this document, and obviously there, there's not. It, it the, you, could, you could definitely give it more information, mm. um, but in a way, I think the the homepage probably summarizes things in a really succinct way. Anyway, so um, I think it's still valuable what we're giving it. It's basically for anyone who's just listening in um, or not focused on the screen. Uh, I just created a text version of the homepage and brought it back in. I'm going to go return. Cool. So what's it doing now? Thank you for providing me the information about Leonardo AI. It's clear that the platform aims to simplify and streamline the content generation process for artists and designers, offering a suite of tools to create, modify, and iterate on visual assets using AI models. Um, so with this understanding of the product vision and mission, let's revisit the onboarding process and tailor it to, um, the unique needs of Leonardo.ai users. So again, it's just running through um, some objectives here, building more context for itself, which is great. I'm gonna let it keep generating this. Um, you know, some of the headings include um, introduce Leonardo AI's um, value proposition, showcase core values, highlight user um, um, asset categories, provide guidance on model training, um, encourage um, experimentation and iteration and offer support and resources. So under each of these headers, um, it goes into a lot more detail. But... Wild. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very, pretty useful, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So like, I mean, there, there's these moments you have, right? When you, because I'm, I'm, I'm a designer and you, and Dave and I were going through this the other day. It's like, there's that little voice in the back of your head that just goes, do you really want to be showing people? that you yeah, can do this right. stuff, exactly. you know? Yeah. But at the same time, you'll see that the, the problem that we have now as humans is bandwidth because the, the deeper we go, the more information you need to absorb and interpret to yeah. take action in the real world. Yeah. And so it doesn't, it, it's really useful, mm. but we ain't going anywhere anytime yeah, soon. Yeah, yeah. That's my outcome, isn't it? There's no, yeah, <laughs> you still got to... Like do it's something like the, with this in the real world. Those like the cycles of, Sorry, Dad? you know, the cycles of like iteration and improvement, like, you know, like we can, if you imagine like a circle and yeah. you know, like we, we iterate and improve, iterate and improve and that's our bandwidth. But with these tools or we don't have the ability to sort of have this really tight spring, like, like loop that just continues to go around Feedback loops. Around really, really fast. Yeah. Yeah, mm. it's um, it is interesting watching Auto GPT do its work, um, and bouncing backwards and doing some of those those feedback loops. That's that's kind of terrifying. Um, <laughs> it's like, but it's still um, yeah. It, it, it I think there's more opportunities currently than there are um, risks for me, um, short term at least. But impossible to see the future. Um, so the next prompt. Um, 
can you help me list the top demographics for our business? Let's see what it does. Certainly. To determine the top demographics for Leonardo AI, we should first consider the primary user groups that are most likely to benefit from the platform. Based on the product's features and capabilities, here are some potential demographics to target. The game designers and developers, digital artists and illustrators, graphic designers, um, animation and film. So this is where we're starting to go into, look, so you go back through the process that we went through where we all ideated. And when you bring a lot of people to the table for workshops, you bring a lot of ideas faster, right? For different people we could focus on, customer segments, etc. That's one of the benefits of a workshop. This has clear value in terms of speeding up that process, right? It's just, it's brought, it started the thinking. It's brought um, customer segments to the table um, that, you know, some of these uh, surprising educational institutions, mm. you know, we had creative directors on there and art directors, um, architects and interior designers. We actually had them on there. I don't know, is it listening? <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> it's really, so an, animation and film production teams. Look, I mean, this is stuff that if, before the workshop, we could have had some things on the board, right? Mm. You know, or we could have had some things up our sleeves to bring to get the conversation going, you know, mm. and then pass it back through that, that filter of um, stakeholder review. Like what, are, who are the ones that we're going to focus on now? Mm. You know, we got that big board, some of them supplied by AI, some of them refined by humans or created by humans. And then we got the, um, everyone voting and then the decision maker going, bang, we're going to focus on this guy for the next X weeks or X months or whatever it might be, or these three people, you know, mm -hmm. um, does that make sense so far? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are we on track? Am I? Am I? Am I waffling on, or am I on no, point? Are we doing things? Doing this good things. Good. Yeah. Wait, cool. It's good. It's good. All right. So the next one. Can you help me to list the jobs to be done for each of these personas? What job are they trying to get done by using this product? Please add the data to a three column table, persona category in the left category, persona in the middle column and job to be done in the right listed as bullet points. Certainly, here's a three column table with the persona categories, personas and their respected jobs to be done. So game designers and development, game design and development. So the persona in that category is game designer and the jobs to be done listed in handy, neat little rows, uh, generate game asset um, assets efficiently. So these are, if you know about jobs to be done, um, the job, the best way that I can describe it is that jobs already exist. It's very rarely rare that there's ever a new job for a human. Um, they are, um, these these customers are trying are currently getting these jobs done by other means you want them to fire the other provider who's helping them get their job done and hire you mm. to get that same job done you got to you got to offer them a more compelling bit of value than the other option right mm. and so again um would you know if you didn't have experience with the craft would you have gone down this particular rabbit hole Maybe, maybe not, you know, um, but I think back to knowing your craft, I think it's, it's important, right? Like yeah. this, this is, yeah, super valuable stuff, but you need to know what to ask for. And so for game designers, well, let's, let's pick one that is, so we got, um, well, let's pick a surprising one, architecture and design. So what are the jobs that an architect is trying to get done? So they've, they've given like a general job. Um, at the top, which is interesting, streamline the asset creation process. That's pretty cool, you know? So they might be using another um, software tool that helps them streamline that asset creation process currently, right? Mm -hmm. Why would they switch to Leonardo.ai to streamline that process? Yeah. Um, so as an architect, the, another job under here is create innovative building concepts and layouts. Um, and what's interesting about this is we put architects in architecture in um, as one of the customer segments in the, the Miro board. Yep. Um, 
yeah, uh, it's it's surprising to me at least that um, GPT four came up with it as a segment on its own. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure we don't have anything on the website about that. Like, no, I don't think anything lends itself towards that. So, don't, then, really interesting. The thing this is, is we I... do have a lot of architects users, uh, which is cool. So we're seeing it being used in that way. We didn't expect it to, and GPT just knew. <laughs> Yep. That's great. Well, yeah. Right. I think um, there's, there's a cue, right? Like I'm going to mention this because I'm this, this experiment, I'm used to running workshops and as a facilitator, you've got to guide people through exercises in a really tight period of time. You mm -hmm. call it working together alone. And so Dave, you need to like, I don't know, we need a button or something when I talk over the top of people or, you know, don't let people speak. You got to, tell me to shut up, man. Like seriously, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be offended, right? <laughs> You're doing good, man. You're doing good. Yeah. Hey, cool, cool, cool. Good, good, good. Um, so yeah, um, another job for an architect, uh, explore different architectural styles efficiently. Um, a way that you can imagine them currently getting that job done would be through like God, Pinterest, right? Mm -hmm. You know, doing a mood board through Pinterest. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and that's without knowing anything about them, right? I'm like, sorry to the architects out there who might cringe at me saying you use Pinterest. Like I've got no idea. Um, and we'll just, we'll choose one more, right? Um, so let's choose one that, um, so art director for creative leadership category, which is interesting. Um, so one of the jobs, the, the overarching job was accelerate the design process. Seems relevant. That seems like a relevant, yeah, relevant job. Uh, and then uh, supplementary to that is guide teams in generating visual ideas and assets. Mm -hmm. Look, we could we could go on. There's a whole bunch here um, for anyone who's listening um, and not watching. There is God looks like maybe thirty different jobs um, under one, two, three, four, five, six uh, personas, persona groups. So that's pretty useful, right? So far, um, you know, my creative juices, sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say, so how do we then use the jobs to be done? Um, these these points within this jobs to be done and framework to move forward. That's where we're going. Uh, so the next step is, so which of these personas might provide the greatest opportunity for short-term growth? So that's the question I'm gonna ask. <laughs> No, it's, it's nat natural language prompting, right? Like, and this is, you know, Dave and I, when we came up with this the other night, we weren't, you know, carefully curating. We were just flowing through with what I might ask myself as a designer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, but we were asking the machine, you know, mm. um, What's and again, is, um, I've been using GPT for so long now. And it's funny because just reading like what you're asking so is sort of getting me excited because it's like, damn, yeah, you should ask that, right? So it really is knowing what to ask. Um, yeah, it's really funny. That's uh, interesting to me, but yeah. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, 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 you know, at least at this point in time and for the next few years, I don't know about the future. That, that still terrifies me. I feel that it is um, at least engineered or designed to um, produce more, a uh, higher volume of higher quality outcomes for professionals, right? So it's like, if you are already a professional in your own right, you will be able to pr um, produce um, maybe not even more, but higher quality, mm. but mm. potentially more and higher quality, right? I think so. Yeah. You know, if that's the mandate from the business, like we need more stuff done and you know, then that more stuff might be of higher quality, right? But yeah. Well, initially it was just meant to be text, text completion, but then it, uh, spread <laughs> this, uh... <laughs> that's it. So we got, so I said, which of these personas might provide the greatest opportunity for short term growth while all personas mentioned can, um, oh, hold on, I've got a call from my son. I have to call you back. Sorry, buddy. Um, well, all the personas mentioned can benefit from using Leonardo AI, focusing on game designers and game developers could provide the greatest opportunity for short-term growth. So here's That's why. Reassuring to know. 
Which one should we zoom in on? Um, so we got uh, we got four options, uh, four explanations here. We got high demand for game um, assets. Time. These are reasons. Um, so time and resource savings, um, versatile and cust versatility and customization, and industry trend towards procedural and AI generated content. Which which one is most interesting to you, um... Jake? Well, in terms of most interesting, the last one is quite interesting because I do feel like it's starting to go in that direction. Like a, a well, lot of game studios we're talking to, yeah. um, they're aware that like, okay, now to like level up and like really increase output or like use cases where, you know, you build these like mobile apps uh, and games that just like require reskinning. It's like usually a long process, but now like the AI is a perfect use case for speeding that up. So it's interesting to see that it mentioned the trend towards that um this early on mm. yeah well let's 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 read that um so the the response was so which of these personas might provide the greatest opportunity for short-term growth while all personas uh, mentioned can benefit from using leonardo um, focusing on game designers and developers could provide the greatest opportunity for short uh for short-term growth here's why and we'll focus in on industry trend towards procedural and AI generated content. The game industry has been increasingly adopting procedural and AI generated content to improve game development efficiency and create more immersive experiences. Leonardo AI's AI based asset generation aligns with this trend, making it an attractive solution for game designers and developers. Great. Like the other explanations are just as good, right? But I think for the purpose of this exercise, we'll, we'll, we'll try and narrow down um, the results with the next prompt. So if we were to focus on fleshing out, um, so in the previous one, it was the third persona. Let's change this. Um, so which persona did we have? Um, let, let's, would you like to choose one of the surprising ones or, or should we choose um, the persona for, well, let's, we'll go with the one we initially chose, right? Which was game studios. Yeah, sure. Yep. Narrow down to personas. Well, since um, it's the one so, GPT suggested, which is the fastest for short-term growth, it probably is reassuring. That as well, right? So makes sense, yeah. Well, it's almost ver verified and validated the decision, right, to go in that, that direction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, yeah. which is what so, I meant to, and Jake, that's reassuring to know that. Um, definitely reassuring, yeah. I'm glad I picked that one now. <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So then um, we've got... Uh, game designers and the game developer. Well, we actually under here, this is interesting. We had art director under creative leadership though. So it's actually, um, yeah. So we, we actually want to do some fancy merging here, don't we? So we want to um, focus in on the um, art director for game, um, game design and development company. Um, so if uh, we were to focus on fleshing out um, the following persona, um, art director um, for a game studio maybe? Or... Oh yeah. Game Design Development Studio, and let's take, let's actually bring in, maybe we can bring this in, um, medium-sized game studio, multiple titles, and look, let, let's zoom in a little bit, right? Let's go medium-sized, and just see what it comes up with. Yeah, yeah. You know? Let's just take it, bring it back in. Uh, art director for a um, medium-sized game studio, Um, with multiple titles and many existing assets. Could you help me with the persona format? I would like to use proto persona format. So for me, a proto persona is just like a, a simplified persona that just focuses on, um, you know, the, the user goals, not demographics, which I don't know if you've ever seen personas before that, you know, have Jane, 35, has a dog, 
loves long right. walks on the beach, all that sort of stuff. I don't, I'm, I'm just never interested in that, right? So proto persona just cuts the fat and gets straight to what's important for a persona. Yeah, right. What are they trying to get done? Um, and what are their motivations for doing it? So um, I would like to use proto persona format that uses the jobs to be done along with other information you believe to be relevant, relevant to a persona. I hope I don't run out of prompts. I don't know why it's just all of a sudden decided to limit me. Like I've. Yeah, only uh, 3.5 is unlimited, but four is still kept. Yeah, well, no, I've got an uncapped instance. Like I'm still like I'm using four in another window and it's not capped because I'm paid, paid for pro. But um, yeah, just this morning when I created the new one, it just decided to tell me that I only have 25. Anyway, so here we go. So it's spitting out this beautiful persona named Alex. So uh, just to read this one out. So art director for a medium sized game studio. Demographics, age 35. <laughs> it is it is listening and it's got a sense of humor. <laughs> um, but it's kept the demographics um, very short form, um, which is great. You know, we've only got three bullet points here um, rather than long winded stuff. Education, bachelor's degree in fine arts and game or game design experience, 10 plus years in the gaming industry with experience working on multiple titles. Um, so the goals oversee the creation of high quality and engaging visual assets for various game titles, maintain a, a consistent art style across all game assets, streamline the asset creation process to meet tight deadlines. Foster collaboration and creativity with the art team. Keep up with industry trends and leverage new technologies to improve game visuals. Pain points. Manage a large number of assets across multiple game titles. Ensure um, consistency in the visual style um, while exploring new design ideas. Balancing the time spent on creating assets um, with other responsibilities. Coordinating with various team members to ensure smooth workflow. This is where I start to go, you know, and I, I think humans do this as well, that you know, I start to worry about these hallucinations and, you know, is it modeling the outcome based on the, the, this, you know, the goal that we have for this thing, you know, it's like, cause these seem, you know, it's interesting. The, the first two are pretty bang on and like stuff we're aware about at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, like asset management in AI is a huge thing just because you're generating such a large uh, amount of assets and the data requirements are huge and like yeah, mm. being able to manage when you're creating like hundreds of iterations is um, is really important. So that's that's interesting because mm. that's a problem we're looking to solve at the moment. Um, that's it. And it's um, I just because these are, you know, managing large numbers. Of, it's almost like... Um, well, to me, at least, it feels like that, you know, these are, these are probably quite obvious matches that for, for a, um, art director, mm. like it's, um, I don't know if I'm explaining myself well, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm less surprised about the pain points for art direction mm. on this. And it's like, it's, 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 yeah, but anyway, it's still really, really useful. Um, and sorry, did I interrupt you there? Um, Jake, you. No, 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 you're good. So then the job's to be done. David Jackson cop yeah. Can you hear me? Do me yeah. Sorry, my, I know my mic's terrible. That's why I'm not really you're right. you know, speaking too much. Can you do me a favor, copy and paste that um, persona into the Miro board, please? Sure. Just the, the Let's do it. Oops. Let's get it in there. And let me just play with that for a bit while you carry hey, on. Cool, man. No worries. Awesome. So jobs to be done. So no, no worries. Um, so guide team in generating visual ideas and assets using Leonardo.ai. And this is interesting. There's a bit of prompting I need to do at the moment because these the, the jobs shouldn't be about the the um, the system that we're trying to solve a problem for. The jobs should be about the actual job. You know, um, guide the team in generating visual ideas that's a job that you might be using another platform for. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about Leonardo AI yet, right? So this is where I need to sort of in, interrupt and guide it a little bit. Um, 
and ensure a consistent style across um, design elements created with Leonardo. So let's let's do it. This is what I had to do last night as well, or the other night. So this prompt. So your jobs to be done should not be um, should not actually be about Leonardo AI specifically. They should be about the job you are looking to get done with any platform that helps them do it the best. Um, your jobs to be done are good. But can you adjust them? Because that, that's another thing with prompting. You just want to, you want to give, it, give it some encouragement as well. Yeah. Um, I'd even go as far as to say that they're, um, they're great. Um, but can you adjust them and take this into consideration? Let's see what it comes back with. You forgot to say uh, please and thank you as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> I'm going to start doing that. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Preparing for the AI takeover. Yeah. Cool. So it's, it's just redone the jobs to be done. Um, Alan, can you please redo the persona along with the, um, and add the jobs to be done um, along uh, persona and add the jobs to be done in this. All that. Uh, I apologize for the confusion earlier. There we go. So it's giving us that persona. That's great. Look, while it's while it's um, spitting that out, that's probably the slowest I've seen it go so far. Um, let us move on to the next one. So for persona X, can you list the other ways this persona might be likely to be getting um, the following job done currently, right? Terrible wordsmithing there, but you get the point. Um, mm -hmm. And so we're going to put in the persona name and the job that we choose in this prompt and see where it takes us. So for the persona, Alex. Alex, can you list the other ways this, pers um, they, um, this persona might be likely to be getting the job done currently and the jobs are efficiently generate a diverse range of high quality visual assets to support multiple game titles. Beautiful. Um, engage. So these are, these are the job, these are the jobs to be done in the persona for Alex ensure consistency in art style and aesthetics across all game assets while allowing room for creative exploration. Beautiful. Reduce the time spent on creating and iterating on game assets. Um, enabling the art director to focus on other responsibilities. Foster collaboration and creation within the art team by adopting tools and processes that streamline asset generation and ideation. That one's interesting to me because it's almost like um, it, it's in the potentially a, a, um, something we could zoom in on for um, the, the marketing side mm. pre-authorized side of the business right like when they're finding these tools they're trying to find ways of doing this right yeah um so stay up to date with industry trends and leverage innovation innovative technologies to enhance the visual appeal and engagement of the studio's games um all really really interesting which one do you think we should um zoom in on i want to know how this this um user alex this this persona alex is currently getting one of these jobs done. That's what I'm going to do next. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Maybe uh, consistency. Um, sure. Cons one. Yeah, this one. It's yeah. Start on aesthetics across all game assets, while allowing room for creative expression. Cool. So let's chuck it in here. So the, the prompt I'm about to ask is, and, and just excuse the, like I said, wordsmithing, it's terrible, but hopefully um, the, the AI understands. For the persona, Alex, can you list the ways this persona might be likely to get, um, to be getting the, the, the following job done currently? Mm -hmm. um, ensure consistency in art style and aesthetics across all game assets while ensuring room for creative expression. Um, and we might actually let's let's look into that. We'll give it a little bit more um, information for the persona. Alex, can you list other ways 
um, you know, uh, this this could be this could be um, software online tools um, uh, or any thing you think is relevant. Um, let's see what happens. Jackson, while um, while that's uh, spitting out. You want the other jobs? jobs? No. Do, or do you want to do you want to meet Alex? Go back to the Miro board. Oh, no. Hold on, I'm going to give you the the other um, the updated persona as well. There you go. That's just generated. <laughs> uh, I that's just Alex. Generated, um, that's Alex. I thought Alex was a woman. Uh, I thought Alex was a woman, man. I. I, 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 I I actually didn't say that. I just said Alex is a 35 year old art director for a medium sized game studio, and that's the result. So, isn't that interesting? I think I think for the sake of this, because we, we seem to just be having um, uh, men in our conversations, except for Bettina, which I can't wait to get her back on again. But let's let's make Alex a woman oh, in the I'll game industry, an art director. I'll change it to a woman and see what let's, happens. Let's do it. Give me a second. Is this um, about it? Yeah, this is Leonardo. Was it Leonardo? The, yeah, RPG oh, sick. 4.0 That's awesome. model. Um, I'll, yeah. I'll yeah. <laughs> Love it. That's um, great, man. That's really cool. Um, so we don't have much time left. Okay. Um, so I'm going to zoom in on this. So for um, so certainly as art directors like Alex have various ways to ensure consistency in art style and aesthetics across all game assets while allowing room for creation, um, the creative pro ex allowing room for creative exploration. Some methods and tools may, they might currently use include style guides. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, so I'm just going to read the, the, the titles of these points first, and then we'll, we'll discuss what to do with them. Art reviews and critics. Um, collaborative tools. Um, they're not really going into. Oh no, we'll, we'll go in deeper in a second. Um, version control systems, digital art software, um, visual reference and mood boards, design workshops and brainstorming sessions. So, where I'd probably go with this is um, ask it to give us some examples of collaborative tools or design and art software that they might be using. So actually, mm -hmm. just give us a list. Um, yeah. keep, keeping in mind that I think um, the uh, training uh, set for um, GPT, all all GPT um, three and four and everything is from 2021. Mm -hmm. So it might not be perfectly up to date, but when we did this last time, it still gave us links that worked. Mm -hmm. So um, which one do you think would be interesting to, to, to zoom in on? Um... Because remember, we're, we're wanting to know how they're currently getting um, this job done, you know, with, with these other platforms. So we can maybe offer them an alternative. So for me, a, an example might be. Um, yeah, so, this is interesting to me because I think it's uh, the answer it's given is um, like the, the traditional way that you do things, but I don't know uh, if these would necessarily be replaced with like, say we're talking about consistency, like you'd still want a style guide, but then you apply that to uh, mm -hmm. how you train a model. Yeah. So, um, yeah, not necessarily, maybe, maybe collaborative tools is, I guess. Well, let's, let's zoom in on that a little bit, right? Like, cause this is where it starts getting interesting. Yeah. Like, I mean, like I said, doing, doing these things on your own, doesn't you know it's like now we have yeah we've got a little bit of stakeholder engagement where we're going deeper into your requirements right and what you know yeah. to be true um digital art software might be the better one actually My bad. yeah but also maybe what you said about that right so um digital art software um is it worth mentioning that we um you know <sighs> Because are we going to be working with digital art software or are we going to be replacing it? I don't think we're going to be replacing it, right? 
like mm, yeah not completely maybe part of workflows there yeah yeah gotcha so let, let's let's zoom in on it the next prompt was can you narrow down to the top 10 and it's not competitors for this one. Oh, it might be you know um let's take it we're almost at the end here it's great so um can you uh narrow it down to the top 10 competitors um Hey, I don't know what I was thinking there, but anyway, um, for top 10 competitors, um, for five digital art software, um, digital art software. Um, let's just see what, what we get back, right? <clears throat> so for me as a, as a, um, as a product designer rather than a UX designer, because we've, we've sort of gone beyond now the, um, understanding the user and what I might actually do is, um, show how you can take these tables and bring them into Miro, which I think is just awesome, right? This, this table feature, um, that I only discovered a few weeks ago, you can actually paste these direct into, oh, it's not going to do it because I'm doing multiple tables if I go, oh, I might be because I'm doing the table headers as well. Hey. Anyway, I'm not going to troubleshoot that now. Um, basically you can, if you prompt GPT to create a table, you can paste them as stickies, mm. you know, so they just come across the sticky notes in here. So then we can further move things around and collaborate as a team, right? Mm. Which is, I think an important step in this. Um, for some reason it's not working right now, but I promise, I promise you it works. <laughs> yeah, it should work because it's mapped We did that yeah. for an actual user journey for one of these personas, right? We did the other night, that's right. Somewhere where we had, yeah, across the, you know, one axis, the user journey and, and the, um, at the, mm. the steps that that persona was going to take. Yeah. So, so for me now, like I'm, I'm moving into more product design space than the UX space at the moment. Um, I'm starting to, um, think about, okay, well, look, um, these, these users that we said are really important. Um, they've got a job that needs to get done. They're currently getting it done with other software, right? We've got a list of that software now, um, on the screen and I'm thinking, how can I, um, either get this this art director on this this game studio to switch from that platform to our platform or can we create um uh something that works in parallel to one of these right it's like okay um they're currently using adobe photoshop cool so when i start when i place it through that lens um i'm i'm thinking okay can we do a, um, a photoshop plugin mm. You know, I'm starting to think, think about that. And that, that could actually be a really useful marketing initiative on its own, creating a plugin for generative AI for game studios focused on art directors. Um, but it's a, it's a non-direct method of getting them into the platform itself. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You're actually marketing the plugin instead of the business. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, you know, same with Adobe Illustrator, Coral Draw, <laughs> is that still a thing? <laughs> Is it? Do people use Coral Draw? It's like, I think, I think the AI is hallucinating. I've got no idea. But, um, so Affinity Designer, love that product. Super cool. And, and I, I don't know, but it's probably a little bit more research to see in that like, um, smaller to mid-level game studio. I don't know. Might be that it's, it's a really common tool. You know, I, I prefer it over Adobe any day. Mm -hmm. Um, so procreate, um, Krita. So anyway, I think we get the point, right? Like a, these are, it's helping us, um, identify how this, this user is currently getting that, um, set of jobs done and hopefully leads to, um, mom, you know, insight and, and moments that we can explore to offer them alternatives, you know, mm. um, or make that, the, the, um, or make the process of getting the job done with that pl platform even better. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Um, yeah. so we've, we've only got a few more prompts here. I'm just going to read them to see if they're still relevant. Um, 
So how uh, might we offer a compelling reason for this persona? Yeah, look, I think this is where we're probably going off track. I, I don't know if any of these we would say is a, and um, we're offering an alternative. Yeah. Yeah. Not a, yeah, definitely not. Where does your mind go with this now? What, what are um, your questions for it? I mean, I mean, a comment on this, I know, uh, like Blender and Unity, uh, a couple of other ones that I would have mentioned there. And for those, we are working on plugins. Um, okay. Awesome. What you're talking about. Yeah. Um, That's great. But, uh, yeah. So then, <laughs> so let, let's tell a little story. Let's just do it. Right. Let's go. Um, uh, Affinity Designer would like to create a plugin for Photoshop. Should we do it? Yeah. <laughs> um, we like to create a plugin for Photoshop so that um, Alex can um, generate uh, assets um, <clears throat> using Leonardo.ai without um leaving uh the app without leaving photoshop just to be clear photoshop. Mm. um so let's let's imagine let's imagine the product um the plugin is built the plugin is built mm. um what are the um can you um, can you help us can you help us um, <clears throat> step out uh, an onboarding process to the app from um, marketing through to conversion and first time use. Um, have I said bullet point? Can you please step out? No, step out onboarding process as bullet points. Um, sorry, put that at the end. Let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. Just bringing it back to the conversation that we, we started with, right? I see if it, you know, if it's um, useful in enhancing that that ideation process, and and you know, and and to me, how can we um, better bring AI to the table in that co-creation process with stakeholders and team members? You know, sort of what we're doing now. Like I, I haven't seen this done yet. Mm. You know, um, doing and and the tools aren't set up to do it yet either, right? Like we. We can't log into the same instance at the same time, unless you've got an API um, account. You can't have multiple people in um, Chat GPT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> like getting us to a stage where we have ideas to like test and get feedback from those tests and be able to like, um, you know, I guess rapidly iterate is probably how it's going to like speed up this process, right? We get the results faster from the ideas we want to test. Um, to a um, table with um, a two column table. Let's do this and then we can wrap it up. We'll bring this over into Miro and we've got a journey, right? Um, can you please add this to a two column table with um, a lot of support. Um, what are we calling this? Um, with uh, the <coughs> journey category um, on the left, e.g. Uh, left. Let's just see what it does. And the steps on the right as bullet points. Uh, steps on the right. Let's just do that. So I just said, can you please add um, this journey? journey to a two column table with the journey category on the left 
and steps on the right. And then hopefully we can cut and paste this into Miro. Let's see. It's not sticking them into individual cells, but look, we can start reading these out, right? So marketing and awareness. Promote Leonardo AI plugin through targeted ads on social media platforms, share blog posts, tutorials, and success stories, collaborate with influence artists and game developers to create sponsored content. It's pretty, pretty straightforward stuff, right? But I mean, it's, it's helping get the ball rolling so mm -hmm. far. It's, it's great to have something prompt you and, and get that down, you know, on, on paper website and product info, create a dedicated landing page for the, um, Leonardo AI Photoshop plugin, offer a free trial or a limited time discount, provide um, uh, details and inst installation instructions and system requirements, etc. So how do we feel about this? You, you understand how this sort of layers over our earlier exercise where we were? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, it makes so a lot of sense. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's quite useful how, how you can go through that process and um, yeah, get something really useful to work off, obviously. Um, but yeah, it was also interesting to see like the, the, the way you prompt it is really important and having that knowledge, um, is key, I think, cause, um, yeah, if I were to try this without knowing that, uh, I would have tried to get it all done in one go in like one, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it won't be, won't be as high quality. So that's for sure. Hey, Dave, how do I change these, um, the sticky note width again in this, why do I struggle uh, with left, this left hand left? second second from the left no no on the toolbar this one here the, the little post the toolbar. Yeah, that's it that's it you're just there he highlighted it this one here no anyway look yep. i'm not i won't do that now but um basically we would take these guys and you know um lay them out like this there we got our steps underneath So we actually have now a journey similar to the one that we created earlier, but we've used AI to, you know, augment the, the process and, and hopefully bring, um, you know, some fresh ideas and, um, and more ideas to the table in a short, shorter period of time. Um, you know, these need to be broken, broken down further, but does that tie things together? Do we think? to where yeah, we've yeah, come well, from it might be useful to know like how long would have this process taken and with how many people professionals it's it's hard to say and that's and that's like i was saying before i don't know if it's about <clears throat> um impacting time rather impacting quality like it, it might be um, possible to do more stuff faster if that's what you're being asked to do but like why why not just improve the quality you know so i think that the if you had the same amount of time but using but co-creating with ai you um are just improving the output dramatically you're being able to think through more options faster um narrow them down with the team um you know have that constant conversation and yeah just, just make it, make it better. You know, don't, don't settle for, um, you know, X, Y, or Z, take it, take it another step further. Mm. You know, yeah. like I, I'd, I'd re really be reluctant. And I'm not just saying that because, you know, I'm concerned about AI taking all of our jobs. I'm saying that because that seems to be where I've gotten to with learning about using these tools. Mm. You know, if, if the, if the job is to move fast, then the output should be higher quality as well, but moving fast. <laughs> but if the job is to just do better, you know, with the time you have, then I think that's the optimal result, right? Yeah, hundred yeah. um, percent. And you like, you can almost imagine, and I'm, I'm not want to go down any, you know, utopian pathway or anything, but um, you think about the number of problems we've got to solve in the world, right? And the fact that, we uh, none of us have time to scratch ourselves, let alone thinking about solving them. Mm. You know, um, I, I'm hopeful that that maybe the 
you know, the direction these tools are heading in will, will let us have that opportunity to actually focus on some of these bigger, broader problems, right? And uh, it's probably a fair segue into, <clears throat> you know, the, the initial mission for this, this um, broadcasting experiment that Dave and I are doing is we really want to try and affect some sort of positive um, influence on the world around us, not just focus on profit and, and um, you know, cash because um and at the moment we're, we're really not you know for anyone who's who's gone through this and and has listened to me riff on or you know or, um preach on my um vision for this this series and go well hold on you you haven't really been talking about anything you know in terms of um you know uh, betterment of humanity through these these tools or you know taking it to the next uh, next step or going deeper it's like look that'll that'll come you know at the moment we're just trying to carve out the time and, and get used to running these things and and um hopefully if people like them enough we can start steering it in um you know in other directions as well but mm. look well said well said <laughs> Well, look, I think we've only got um, 10 minutes until I start my day job. So <laughs> we've had to stop and have a quick break. And look, is there anything, um, <clears throat> Jake, that you'd like to, to say in summary? Uh, no, man. I mean, this has been great. Like, really enjoyed this process. And I think um, what you guys have set up here is going to be really interesting. I know I watched last week's one and... Uh, I couldn't stop watching it and then I had to sleep because this was pretty early this morning. So, um, <laughs> yeah, and I really appreciate the time you put into this and appreciate you using Leonardo as an example. I think um, following this process is going to be quite helpful moving forward because we have a lot of work to do um, on this front. So, yes, yeah, awesome. really appreciate your time. Great. Well, look, if you feel like sharing this with um, with your, your Discord community, <laughs> great. Yeah. Let, let, let us know. Maybe, let us know. Maybe... Maybe let me polish it up a bit. Yeah, yeah, cool. Oh, I don't think there's anything um, published yet anyway. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. All right. Well, guys, look, have an Thanks, awesome day. Um, I've really enjoyed yeah. this as well. Uh, Dave, did you have anything to, to, to wrap up, mate? No, mate. Just that um, Alex actually is a All woman, good. not a guy. Great. Oh, you fixed it. Cool, cool, cool. There we go. <laughs> there we go. No. Nice. Cool. Well, that, that's amazing. Hey, look at that output. So this is from Leonardo um, AI, guys, that uh, the image is generated here. That's incredible stuff. And, cool. And I am not a All right, guys, we better wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Cheers, guys. Thanks. See ya. Cheers. See ya, bro.